At long last, I think we've found it, a worthy competitor to the Geely Cool Ray. Hey everyone, Vince here from Auto Industria and what I have with me is the new GAC GS3 M Zoom and a little bit of a cold, so I'll sound a little different on this one. Now, the GS3 nameplate is not a new one in the Philippines. Uh, there was actually a new, gen uh, well, an older generation one that they're actually, I think they're still running out some of the stocks of that one at a much lower price. But the new one, the new generation one, is this one. And they're kind of calling it M Zoom. And from the design of the vehicle, you can kind of really see what they mean because it looks like somebody's trigonometry experiment you know, taken up to, you know, 11 or something like that. That's how it appears to me. Because look at all the angles, the edges of the car. It looks fantastic. And even when I show you the lights, let's say unlock it, you see how the lights are? It's really different than anything else we've seen in the market. Look at the grill, look at all the details. And by the way, this is the R-Style variant. That's why you get a different body kit. But let's take you on a walk around of what else you can expect from this vehicle. Now from that angle, you can see more of the tree go going on with the M zoom. Because yes, there really are a lot of triangles with the vehicle all around, and that's what's really cool. One thing you will also notice here is that right now the car is locked and the side mirrors are folded, but so are the door handles. When I press unlock, the mirrors unfold and the door handles pop out, which is pretty cool. Now this is going to make a few changes while I, let me just, open this a little bit so it doesn't bother me because it just keeps locking unlocking so while i'm walking around but still you can see here our style this is of course a bsuv that's why when you look at it it does look like a legit geely cool ray rival something along the lines of honda hrv that kind of thing but what's really interesting about the r style is that they fitted it with 19 inch wheels, whereas the other versions have 18s. But what's really nice here, apart from the design of the wheel with the same orange trim, is actually when you look at the tires. These are not some no-name Chinese brand tires, which we've seen in a lot of other budget models. These are Michelin Pilot Sport 4s. Bastos yang gulong na and we'll have some fun with it when we take it on our autocross. The rear of the M Zoom actually looks pretty cool because I think they got a little bit of inspiration from some of the Lexus models. I think it's the U, the UX maybe, but I like how they executed it here, their design aesthetic. Again, they've got the triangle theme going on. So you've got this thing with a triangle right here. It has these lines again, more of that inside. It just creates a nice, well, kind of continuous, a consistent uh, look to the vehicle. But tail lights again, more, I don't know, quadrilateral, that's not really a trapezoid. This one's more like a trapezoid, but still it all looks pretty cool. It all looks very, very different, very unique. It's a real head turner. Again, you've got the body kit down there. That's why you also have the orange shim. But if you look down there, you notice that the exhaust is right, right there in the middle. That's pretty cool. And those are not fake tailpipes, thank God. Those are actually fully functional. We'll show you later when we drive. But what's really nice, you have this kind of lip right here again it looks very different and even the spoiler here it's it's also very different very very unique now we can pop the tailgate right here it's a power tailgate for this model the space here is where it gets really interesting of course it comes with an early warning device it's velcroed on there so it's you know hopefully you don't have to use it but the measurements here it's about 31 inches from here to there it's 39.5 inches wide between there and in terms of height it's about 27.5 up to here before you start uh, scuffing that but the good thing here is that the space is expandable in several ways for one it's a 60 40 split and you can press down there you can access it from right here Whoop, the latch is right up there now when you fold that down the space now expands to 56 inches from here up to the edge of the rear seat uh, maximum width is also at 52 inches right here which is pretty good. But what's nice, coming closer, is that this actually is a two-tier design. Because for one, when you lift it up, you'll see your toolkit right there, scissor jack again, nothing really uh, to speak of there. But you do have a little bit of extra space here and a donut space saver tire. But what's also nice is that you can expand the space, the height of the, the cargo area by putting this down onto the lower shelf, giving you an extra 
uh, 4-ish inches because now the height from here to here is 31. It's a significant increase in terms of the space of the vehicle and really nice and versatile. So now let's close it up and look at what's under the hood. Powering the GS3 M Zoom is a 1.5 liter turbo gasoline engine. And of course, it's an intercooled engine. That's why you see that little amplifier looking thing up there hooked up to a coolant tank and of course another kind of radiator thing going on underneath there. It's very different to compared to the air air intercoolers that uh, a lot of other car makers use. So GAC likes to use that and GAC likes to show it off because there's no covering on top of the engine bay. But one of the more important things here is that GAC went for a four cylinder. They didn't go for a three cylinder. That's why when we look at the engine, well, there's not much shaking going on because it's a very balanced engine. That's always a good thing. Now the transmission, it's a seven speed wet dual clutch transmission driving the front wheels. Unfortunately, there is no all wheel drive option because the rear suspension is really a torsion beam. You have McPherson's in front, torsion beam in the back, meaning you can't have an all wheel drive system. And when I show you the floor later, you'll see that it's flat. So yeah, there's no space for a, a drive shaft going to the back. What's interesting about the R style that we have here is that there are actually some performance upgrades. No, they didn't bump up the power because this still has 174 PS and 270 Newton meters of torque, the same as the other variants of the GS3 M Zoom. But what really changed is the tuning with the electronics when it comes to response. So what they did, they uh, changed out something with the programming of the ETC of the, the throttle unit to be able to give you well, 0.5 seconds advantage compared to the standard model. So this will do zero to 100 according to GAC uh, from uh, in just 7.5 seconds which is pretty cool. Really, it's surprising that GAC went this way because we weren't expecting performance upgrades with the vehicle. So now, let's check out what's inside. As far as back seats go in this class, this one I think is one of the best, if not outright the best. Because in terms of aesthetics, it looks great with the way they have the leather, the way they have this cream leather here with this uh, line motif that I don't know how to describe. It looks good. You look out in front, got a great uh, window around you. I mean, got great view around you. Even have the panoramic glass roof here, which is fantastic. And then you start feeling the seat, it's like, it's really comfortable. The cushioning is fantastic. I got a center armrest here with two cup holders. And where's my bottle? Barney, my bottle, please, thank you. And it fits my bottle just fine. It can actually also go in here. Uh, so there, perfectly fine for my purposes. There are pockets here on the, uh, on the rears of the seats because you've got the main pocket here, main pocket here, and then two smaller pockets, one for your phone. It's only on this side though, uh, surprisingly, but still, it will come in handy. And then you look here in the center console, there is <laughs> surprisingly one air con vent. So you'll kind of have to jack and poi, that sounds wrong, jack and poi or whatever, to get uh, the privilege of pointing it towards whichever side you want. There's one USB port again. You, you may have to uh, share or put a splitter on it to be able to actually use it, you know, amongst yourselves. But still, it's a great seat to be in. And uh, even compared to Cool Ray, I think this is better for overall comfort on a long drive. Now let's go up in front. If it's your first time stepping into one of the new generation GACs and you go, woo, well, don't worry, yeah, me too. They really put a lot of thought into it. Because with, again, the same kind of a cream thing they have going on, yellowish uh, leather, and then the gray, it creates a nice contrast. I'm partial to red and black, but this one really works very well. It's soft touch materials everywhere. Of course, here, here, here. It, oh, actually, yeah, here as well. Here on the top of the, the, the door cards. That's what you want. You want this feeling of quality. And then when you look around, everything looks like it was really well built, well put together. Even when you look at the corners where certain panels meet, there are no like weird gaps that just 
looks like it was put together very well like a I know a high quality Tamiya kit now when you look at the actual dashboard uh, you have a digital driver screen here with your uh, screen basically for the RPM on the left the tachometer here and then you have your uh, engine temperature and your fuel meter down there this is a multi info display you also have your audio system right here the way it comes out from uh, the dashboard is very nice there's this thing here that I'm not too sure what it's not a vent or anything it's just a little pocket with a divider it looks weird it also does create this odd uh, pocket recess right here which I don't know if you want to put something there you could like I don't know maybe your phone um, won't work there but of course your phone has two spots here one of which is a wireless charger one of which is not so that's pretty cool now we can pour over some of the details of the vehicle for one I like what they did with the AC vents I mean Zach can you move that AC vent let me see how that moves. It's, it's very thrust vector-ish, very jet fighter-like, which is pretty nice. And then here as well in the middle, you've got these uh, vents which are a bit low uh, down from the main screen. What that gives you is the ability to cool down things right here. I mean, this one doesn't have cooled uh, cup holders. It's two of them, but you can point it down and cool things as you see fit. And then, of course, here you have your AC panel. It does look like a radio panel, like you would have, let's say, on a BMW or a Mazda, that kind of thing. But this is actually the AC control panel. So if you twist that, thinking it's going to be volume, no, it's caught me out one or two times, maybe more than two times. So you have your uh, fan speed here, temperature here. You also have it on the screen as well you can control that it does have an air purifier built in and it's actually very very nice what they how they configure that and this is what i mean about having an actual control a tactile control panel for things like that now here in the middle like i said wireless charger on the left and then you have your uh, well non-wireless charger pad on the right it's just it's a nice space and it's something i have been using uh, pretty well in the last few days Overall, I like how GAC did this. Again, it still has that motif. It's kind of similar to the one on the MCO that we reviewed earlier. Same with this uh, shifter or drive selector here. So you have right now we are in P, and then to go into reverse, you press that, and then you go to neutral, uh, neutral there, and then you go to drive right there. That brings up the reverse camera. Uh, it does have this jewel thing which you know i kind of find odd they could have done something different with this one this of course houses uh, the camera for your adas or your uh, advanced driver assist system and you can see that when you look at your steering wheel of course this is a d cut steering wheel flat bottom yes i like those but you do have your smart driver features right here uh, you do have the cruise control but it's also the adaptive kind hence that and then there's a sensor in front so you can set the distance to the vehicle ahead with this one and the vehicle will just maintain a safe distance. This also has the lane keep assist system, which is something pretty useful. And I can show you that once I open this up. Now here, here you have all the features of the vehicle, which is actually really nice. But the thing that really has me uh, tweaked about this car is the driving mode. It's fun to play around with. So right now we're in eco mode normal stuff it kind of slows down the response uh, from the ETC or the electronic throttle control unit basically the gas pedal and then you put it into comfort mode that takes a bit of press there you go makes a sound whenever you make a selection and then you go to sport right in sport mode it goes to the red design but check this out check this screen out when I press sport plus like wow that's kind of neat and then this screen does that it shows you basically a lot like it, it kind of tweaks the whole thing to be more driver oriented of course the bar I'm not sure about the actual unit they're using for that because 400 bar sounds a bit high but uh, still the good thing is that it adjusts the throttle control to be a bit more aggressive with when it comes to response now you can adjust the mirrors here which is unusual because you know normally we have this control panel here on the left side to be able to do that i'd much prefer this than using this uh, and then you have different things like you can open the skylight from here you can open all the windows from here not gonna do it now but you know what let's try the left door open yep close there you go 
but here's the, the camera of the vehicle. It's not as, uh, one thing I found, it's not as fast when it comes to the response because it feels like it's a, it looks like it's low on RAM kind of thing. So sometimes when you're going around, uh, let's say a drive through or going into a parking lot, uh, the actual, it's a bit choppy with the way it works, but still gives you a view of what's around you and you can, you know, be really precise with your parking which is always a good thing it gives you the different views of the car but one thing i found is that when you when you signal left or signal right this view comes up it's basically from here on the mirror the problem there is that i think it's facing the wrong way i'd rather if you're signaled left or signaled right i would rather the view be facing a little bit backward because uh yeah you pretty much it's just covering your blind spot there but i'd much rather know if somebody was coming up from that side so yeah keep that in mind maybe they can work on that for a future update of the vehicle the audio system of this one fantastic it's dts by dolby so yeah let's go drive it and play some uh, eminem because my guy barney he just dyed his hair Let me start this by saying that if you're the type that doesn't like attention, well, you might not want to be driving this because let me tell you now, it's a bit of a head turner. I was driving it around BGC and Makati yesterday. Yeah, you, you get a lot of eyeballs on you because the car looks so cool. Again, the design, they really knocked it out of the park. And of course, when you've become used to a, a sea of, let's say, Toyota Razes, Geely Cool Rays, uh, Honda HRVs. Uh, so on and so forth then something like a, the gs3 m zoom comes along it's like whoa what is that now uh, if you're the type who does like attention then this is going to be the car for you it's the feeling of quality you can hear it or actually don't hear it when you drive around there's no creaking there's no squeaking there's no unusual noises rattling from the interior that is what you want you want something solidly built and this one delivers you that at a price point that is really good the ride actually uh, turned out very nice. It's not going to be as comfortable as uh, some of the others, like let's say maybe the Honda HRV, but uh, compared to the Cool Ray, it's like it's right up there. So that is already saying a lot. And of course, the Cool Ray is going to be our benchmark for this because the Cool Ray it's been impressing us for the last what uh, I think maybe almost four years now. It's 2020. Uh, it's yeah 2023. Uh, I was first launched here in the Philippines, I think September 2019, so more or less four years now. This one is really like based on everything we're experiencing. This is a new hotness. So now let's talk about some of the things we've found that are a bit odd about this vehicle. Uh, for one, the doors, I mean, I've already mentioned that, how this lines up here, it's just not perfect. Maybe they should have gotten the suppliers to talk to each other so they can come up with a shape that actually, you know, fits together like a jigsaw puzzle. Uh, so that, there's that, very, very minor. Uh, the other one is this screen here. Uh, even at the lowest setting, it's still pretty bright, at least for me, because I have astigmatism, so that might be just a me thing. Maybe for you, it's perfectly fine. But I can imagine that if this is tinted, it would even seem uh, a bit brighter. So there is that. Uh, also, uh, the sunshade, or at least the, the roller sunshade fabric that they have for the, for the sunroof, the light does come through it, or the heat actually does come through it uh, quite a bit. So if you add a tint here, it should be perfectly fine. Again, it's all about a matter of, uh, of preference. But the thing that I think needs a bit of work here is going to be the transmission, like generally speaking. Because when I'm driving it around, like right now in traffic, the way it uh, engages and disengages leaves a lot to be desired. Because uh, sometimes it just, it seems a bit confused about what you want to, you know, how, how you want to accelerate like there. Like I just want to accelerate smoothly and I'm modulating my foot uh, to be as smooth as possible, to be as progressive as possible. Uh, and sometimes it just jumps to like, it just drops a gear and then jumps forward. It's a bit strange. Uh, it, it's a tendency of uh, older uh, dual clutches, uh, but this one being a, a newer dual clutch, maybe they can just work on the programming of the transmission. But what they should work on is the way the transmission engages when you're going into reverse. Because uh, when you, let's say, approach a parking slot, and then you uh, go into reverse, I mean, you stop, of course, and then you go into reverse. 
it takes a bit of time before it actually engages. And it almost seems uh, a bit unnatural uh, compared to a lot of other automatics and even DCTs. But this one even more so because when it does engage, it tries to go back qu quite fast. Uh, it's something to keep in mind. Uh, it, it behaves like not like a lot of other DCTs that I've driven. Uh, it's something you need to learn when you actually drive it around. So once you do get used to it, uh, you're perfectly fine. But one feature this vehicle is really missing is some kind of manual mode you know like because they use this kind of uh, shifter which is kind of odd for a you know sporty style uh, crossover but they could have put in let's say a paddle shifters or just use a regular uh, you know lever type gear stick because it could really use it uh, the handling of this vehicle is so good the performance of the engine is actually really good so much so that you really want a manual mode and uh, you know what let me go to back to the warehouse to our little autocross so I can show you. So we're back at the warehouse. Uh, this is where we normally do a lot of our autocross style stuff to get timed laps, but I'm not gonna do that today because we have a lot of water, especially at that part over there, making it a bit dangerous if I do a, yeah. So I'm just gonna go uh, stick on the dry stuff and then we'll just see how it handles. So first I'll put it into Sport Plus, which is gives you the X thing and this display. So let's see. Let's take it out. The launch wasn't particularly great. Holy crap, that really surges forward. Wow, the handling, okay. Okay. So the suspension, as you can see, is a little on the soft side, but the tires really more than make up for it because the level of grip afforded by the PS4s Holy crap, it's pretty good. It shouldn't feel like this with a normal uh, set of tires you would, you know, regularly find in these kinds of crossovers. Like, there. <laughs> Holy crap, that's really good. And that's actually the cheat code that GAC put into this car. Of course, like I mentioned earlier, there are already electronic things they did uh, with the transmission, with the throttle control unit, but when they put on these tires, and by the way, these, these PS4s uh, here in the Philippines cost about, uh, I'd say around maybe 60,000 for a set. Uh, yeah, it's like a huge cheat code. So when you're, when you're turning, it just grips, 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 and it doesn't feel like it's letting go, depending on, of course, how, how fast you wanna actually go. And it improves the braking, and I think that's where they got the extra braking performance from. Because these tires, these are something else and it just transforms the ability of the vehicle uh, when you're tackling corners like these. I mean, normally, I wouldn't do this with a crossover, but holy crap, it's managing very, very well. <laughs> All right, that's enough fun. Let's get back on the road. Now you see what I mean. The performance of the engine is really good. The grip on the tires is really outstanding and the handling, the way this feels, it's just so nice and nimble. It just gives you that kind of confidence, but I really want a manual mode. I want to be able to shift. And because the transmission's behavior is not yet perfected, uh, you want to be able to override it uh, depending on what the situation is and depending on your experience level. And uh, this one doesn't give you that, unfortunately. And it's really exciting to drive. That's the good thing about it. So at least once you get it around, once you get used to it, you know, once you you know, stop fiddling around with the, the sport mode. If I can activate that, that makes that nice sound. And then you go into sport plus and it does the X right there. It's pretty fantastic. It's, it's a bit too much drama, you know, but still it does look really cool. Uh, where it does excel also is in fuel economy. A couple of days ago, I took it around uh, to Makati and back and the, my average speed was a pretty slow 17 kilometers per hour but my fuel economy was, I was doing around 10.1, which is actually pretty good for that speed. When you go up to around 22, the average fuel economy goes up to around 12.5. Again, those are figures depending on how you drive. And what's great about this one is that when you're also driving it around in like heavy traffic, you're not getting the vibrations you would normally get in a three-cylinder engine. Let me shift it back down to the eco or eco or comfort mode. 
So yes, the great thing is that you're not getting the kind of vibrations you would get in a three-cylinder. This is very, very smooth to drive around town. Very quiet. Although, you know, if you want to make a little bit of noise, then you just press this button so you at least get the extra sound from the exhaust system. Before 2019, we didn't think Chinese car manufacturers could really compete against the mainstream Japanese brands, at least here in the Philippines. But that really all changed when, well, actually, that brand came along. The, the, the Geely and the new generation of Geely's, actually. Uh, in terms of the after sales, that's where uh, Geely is having a bit of problems, particularly with parts supplies, uh, that kind of thing. It's, it's not fun to go through that experience or to go through the forums now about how things are uh, going on with, with the part supplies of Geely. But that also opens up the door for other car manufacturers from China, like GAC, to make their presence felt, to make an impression. Because they have to strike while the iron is hot, and that's what actually they've got right here. This car is impressive. And if we put it, oh, we can't wait, actually wait to put it toe to toe with the Geely Cool Ring. It is impressive in so many ways, design, interior, everything else. But what's really gonna matter is the after sales and how they respond to customers. And that's going to be the key for them moving forward. They've already got the car. They just need to make sure that the back end is up and running to handle all of their customers. I really like it when a car maker goes above and beyond when it comes to the design, the engineering, uh, and all the other things that make a vehicle what it is, because that's what I'm seeing with the GS3 M Zoom. It's actually a mirror of what Geely did before with the Cool Ray. That's the same kind of impression that I'm getting from this one, albeit four years later with different styling, with a better interior, with more features, so many more going on with this vehicle compared to the one from Geely. Of course, times have changed, and when it comes to the pricing, that's also changed too. And what's impressive here is that they're coming in at a price that's actually very, very similar, if not identical, to what the Cool Ray was four years ago. The pr starting price for the lower grade variants of this one comes in at 998, and we're actually curious about that, but this one is 1.198. Anyways, let me know in the comments below what you think of the GAC GS3 M Zoom. Wow, that's a really long name because there really is some serious potential in this new crossover from GAC. This is Vince of AutoIndustria.com. Thank you for watching and uh, time for some Beroka.